morning, Republicans. How are you? That's great. Thank you very much, uh, Kevin, for that introduction. It is great to be with you this morning and see the unbelievable turnout here, the excitement that we have going into this election. It is something that we all know is a critical election. Uh, let me just, first of all, uh, tell you folks how important it is what you are doing here today. Uh, you're going to be setting, uh, electing folks to the district, to the state. Uh, you're going to be writing a platform. And I will tell you, I'm just so proud to be a resident of Polk County and to represent you. And we are going to have Polk County represented by a conservative Republican after this election. We all know how critical this election is. We have a federal government and administration that is more concerned about the next election than they are about the next generation. We have people in Washington today who totally disregard the citizens in this country because they believe they know better than you do. And it is fundamentally wrong, upside down, and not what we are as a great nation. This is going to be an election of great contrast. And you've already seen some of the negative ads with the Democrat super PACs coming in, making charges on Medicare and all this, the Medicare thing that was uh, voted last year, the biggest lie, political lie of the year. But they will say anything and do anything. And in this election for Congress, you will not see a clear difference. You're going to see the negative ads, and I see Brad Zahn back here. Does anybody remember two years ago? Does anybody remember one positive ad from Leonard Boswell two years ago? It was all about personal destruction. And no issues. He could not talk about his record. I'll tell you why. And you, you tell me how you would have voted. First of all, there was a $700 billion blank check to an unelected bureaucrat in Washington for them to bail out Wall Street. How would you vote? No! How did Leonard Boswell vote? He voted yes. 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 I voted no. In the stimulus bill, with interest, it's going to be over a trillion dollars of spending. And this is what the president said. He says, well, if we don't do this, unemployment will go above 8%. Well, it's been above 8% for 37 months, over three years, since that stimulus was signed into law. A tremendous waste of hardworking taxpayers' dollars. How did Leonard Boswell vote? Yes. Would you have voted for it? No. no. Leonard Boswell voted yes. I voted no. And when we look at cap and trade, which is a huge government takeover of our energy industry in this country, and by any uh, evaluation, would have raised your utility rates here in Polk County by 20 to 25 percent. Mm -hmm. Stop energy production in this country and have the bureaucrats in Washington running that policy. Would you have voted for that? No. Leonard Boswell did. I voted no. When you look at the government takeover of our health care system, when you think about the $2.6 trillion of costs, when you think about bureaucrats deciding what coverages you can have, stepping between you and your doctor, the greatest expansion of government, and unconstitutional with the un individual mandate, how would you have voted on that bill? No. Leonard Boswell voted yes, I voted no. We also, folks, understand that the expansion of the federal government is affecting each of us every day today, whether it be on your individual liberties and your individual rights, whether it be your religious freedom that is under attack today, whether it is just the idea that they know better than you do, that the individual Hard-working American taxpayer doesn't have any say. The biggest problem we have today in this economy is a federal government that is telling you that next year you're going to have higher taxes. If you hire more people, you'll be punished under the health care bill. If you try to 
actually help your family to grow that a bureaucrat's going to tell you you can't do this and this and this. Again, the bigger the government, the smaller the individual. That's not what we are as a country. We as Republicans have better solutions. We understand that we've got to shrink the size and the scope of the federal government. We've got to limit the tax burden. We've got to respect individual rights in this country. It is a clear choice. You know, a lot of you folks here today <coughs> understand exactly what this election means, how important it is, how important it is that we have a representative here with, that will support the kind of positive change that will grow this country in the future. For many of us, you know, this election uh, is extraordinarily important. It is the election of a lifetime. And I look at it myself. You know, what happens, maybe I'm at the age where it isn't going to matter that much to me. But I will tell you folks, the reason I'm doing this, the reason I care, and I hope the reason you care. January 4th, I had a new grandson. That's my fifth grandchild. I look at that little baby when I hold it. And think about that child's $50,000 in debt when it took his first breath. That we have a government that wants to limit that baby's opportunities. How many of you here think that you have a better life and more opportunity than your parents? How many of you think that if we continue on this course, that your children and grandchildren will have more opportunities than you have? That's what this is about. This is about a fundamental change of the relationship with the federal government and its citizens. We have got to stand up as Republicans, make sure that we do the right thing, that we care. We're going to rein in the federal government. And I will tell you what, <clears throat> I will work day and night. I will raise the resources to fight the negative attacks that are coming. But I can't do it. What I do is very little in comparison to what you can do. You can get out there and make those phone calls. Talk to your friends, your neighbors, at church, at school, or wherever you see them, at the coffee shop, wherever. Put up the yard signs. And you can sign up out here to do exactly that. But this is real, folks. This, we don't have another five years. We don't have that kind of time that we need to really, uh, without fundamental change in the White House and in Congress. It's up to us, it's up to each and every one of us to make sure that we have a positive change for the future, that we save this great nation, that we save it for our ch children and our grandchildren. So thank you all. God bless. Do your job today. And we will win in November. Thank you.